Make sure you do not loosen the set screw on the bottom of the switch housing. The set screw is simply there to move the switch housing from side to side, not for switch housing adjustment. To adjust the switch, simply move the switch housing towards the rear of the machine until the switch lever just makes contact with the dispensing table. Make sure once the lever has made contact with the dispensing table, you do not continue now to Now we should be able to turn the machine on. Back. Tap the foot switch and one label should feed out. Now we'll press the foot switch again. The label should feed out and then stop automatically at the end of the label. Now we're going to demonstrate how to set your bottle matic up for different size containers. The first thing we're going to do is lift the back of the bottle roller blocks up in the air a little bit. Then we're going to slide it forward and then we're going to lock the screws back into place making sure that they're even on both sides if you have a straight container. So we'll place the container in the machine, make sure it sits nice and uh, sturdy. If they're too close together, then the container will want to fall towards the back or fall towards the front. If it's too far apart, the container will sit down too low and your labels will skip up in front of the container instead of going underneath of it. Now we're going to adjust the guide against the bottom of the container once we have it placed where we want it. And as you can see, the pressure arm is needed if we have an empty container as we have here, a plastic container. It doesn't have a lot of weight to it. So we'll pivot it towards the bottle just till where it makes contact and tighten the set screw. That way we can easily slide the bottle underneath the pressure arm. It'll hold it in place and then apply the label. You should be able to easily just slide the container in and slide it out after it's labeled. You do not need to wait for it to stop. As soon as the label is done applying to the container, you can remove it and then put in the next container. Now we can try something a little larger. This is a, a candle. So we're going to move the roller out a little bit. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be cradle the container you're labeling so it doesn't fall out. One of the main things is that whenever you set up your bottle roller that if you have a straight container that it's even on both sides. As you can see this is a pretty heavy object so the pressure arm really isn't needed here. So we should be able to just place the candle in the machine against the guide, press the foot switch, and now we've labeled the candle. It's very simple to set up, only takes a few minutes. If you do have a tapered container, you can adjust the roller further in on one side than the other, and it'll allow the machine to hold the bottle at a taper so the, the label goes on as straight as it can. Always remember, if you do have a tapered container, that the label is going to start going up on the container and then eventually go down so you just want to adjust the taper on the roller so that whenever it starts and stops it's in the same position. One of the unique features about our machine is that the bottle roller block has two holes in it that are spaced exactly one and a half the times the distance of the holes in the bracket below. This allows you to fine adjust the taper on the roller so if you have something that's very slightly tapered or you want to get that label just perfect on your tapered container you can adjust this by moving the screw to the other hole, sliding it into the next hole down below and now you have a fine adjustment for your tapers. Now we're going to demonstrate how to label a lip balm tube. As you can see the bottle roller blocks are offset so that the bottle roller rides towards the bottom of the block. But to label something small like a lip balm tube, we'll need to flip the assembly over so that the bottle roller is now higher than the rubber roller. This allows you to do very small containers and we've been able to label things as actually as small as a quarter of an inch. We're going to lock the bottle roller into the forwardmost position on the brackets. Then the next thing we're going to do is a way to precisionly align the label with the container. So we're going to take the foot switch and we're going to hold the foot switch down and then we're going to just turn the machine on for just a split second just enough to get the label out on top of the rubber roller. 
This will allow us to align the lip balm tube exactly up with the label so that the crease in the label lines up with the lid. Now we're going to bring the guide over against the lip balm tube and then tighten the set screw. This will take a little bit of manipulation to get it exactly perfect because we want precision alignment on something like this. And make sure that that lid lines up with the crease in the label. Now we're going to take the lip balm tube off and turn on the machine. Because that label is sticking out a little bit, it's going to feed on out. Now we're going to put the tube back in. Drop the pressure arm on top of the tube. But now we're going to have to give it a little extra pressure because the lip balm tube is so light and these are pretty stiff labels. And But as you can see, you can label a lip balm tube very quickly. If you've purchased your machine with a Bottlematic 2 option or 2 label option, it is very important to know that you can only switch this from one or two labels while the machine is off. If you switch from one to two labels while the machine is on, the machine will malfunction. Now we're going to demonstrate how to put two labels onto a container. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure the circumference of the of the candle here. And it looks like it's about eight and seven eighths of an inch. So we'll put that in our calculator. Okay. That's the circumference of what we're trying to label. The next dimension we need is the length of both labels. So is what we want to do is we want to measure at the start of label 1 to the start of label 1 on the next set. And that dimension on these labels is 4 and 5 eighths inches. Now we'll want to subtract that from the circumference, which was 8.875. And we're going to subtract 4.625, which was the distance of both labels. And that comes out to 4.25. Now we're going to divide that by 2. And that'll give us the gap we need between the labels, which is 2.125 inches. Because of the mechanical limitation, there will automatically be a half inch check in the label. You will need to subtract this half inch check from the calculation. So the resulting calculation will be 1.625 inches. The left hand dial is in 1 inch increment. The right hand dial is in 1 tenth of an inch increment. Now we'll put on the display to 1, 6, which would be 1.625 times 1 half inch check. Now we'll put on the display to 1, 6, which would be 1.625 inches. Now we'll put on the display to 1, 6, which would be 1.625 inches. Now we'll put on the display to 1.625 inches. You should also be aware that the mathematical formula that we used here is in your instruction sheets as well as everything that we've talked about in this video. That's it. It's very simple to set up for two labels. Please don't ever hesitate to call our 1-800 number. That's 1-800-325-7303. We'll be more than glad to help you over the phone as well.